a very good afternoon to all the participants present here a very good afternoon to dr kadirajan sir dr wilson sir and all the other dignitaries present here i welcome you all to the second day of this national webinar on marine research and aquaculture so at the outset i would like to uh, put my sincere thanks to our chancellor ma'am and president sir for permitting us to conduct this national webinar series also i would like to uh, thank our vice chancellor dr sasi prabha ma'am dr logo sharmagam our pro vice chancellor dr ss rao our registrar dr sundari our director of administration and dr igni sebasti prabhu our controller of examinations this webinar series would not have been possible without the initiation of our pro vice chancellor dr wilson aruni sir thank you very much sir for initiating the events in our department now i request our uh, pro vice chancellor sir to welcome our guest for the day today so uh, respected uh, uh, invited speaker for the our uh, kadri sen sir uh, and my most beloved uh, uh, person whom i would ever like to uh, listen to as a lecturer um, uh, the head of the departments uh, dr ramesh uh, dr narayan uh, all the faculty members uh, my dear participant friends It is really an immense pleasure to be a part of uh, this uh, webinar on uh, marine aquaculture. Um, as you know, that Satibama is beyond leap and bounds, uh, not only venturing into in-house uh, research and academic efforts, at the same time uh, also in virtual more. And uh, we are into webinar uh, since long after the COVID lockdown. So. despite all the trends that happen now either you now die of covid or you die of uh, looking at webinars uh, this is a different webinar where uh, i think the the organizers have put forth where you will see and you will hear fascinating lectures uh, and i really thank and congratulate uh, all the people who have come here to and be a part of this and give a great support thank you so much thank you sir now i request dr maslamani selvam to introduce the speaker to the audience good afternoon to all of you so first of all i should thank uh, our pro vice chancellor sir dr wilson arni sir for uh, his moral support already is helping us to conduct this program and uh, coming to the today's speaker professor dr k kadreshan tac uh, so i'll tell about uh, professor kadreshan uh, before starting uh, about sir so he is my phd guy so i am proudly saying like this uh, and he is now a honorary professor and ugc bsr faculty fellow and uh, formerly dean and director of cas in marine biology faculty of marine sciences annamalai university arangipette and uh, today's topic is uh, like uh, mangroves and uh, aquaculture regarding his uh, contribution to the scientific uh, world he is a well known scientist uh, those who are studying or working in mangroves he is well known to all the people all over the world and uh, regarding his uh, uh, research contribution he has compiled more than 5000 species mostly in the mangrove environment and uh, at the outset he has discovered one new species called rhizophora annamaleana he has given uh, the credit to the annamalai university that's why it's uh, annamaleana and uh, about the mangrove forest uh, regarding his uh, mangrove forest development he has developed more than uh, 220 hectares in the vellar estuary itself where it is located in arangipetai and uh, in the year 2004 it helped a lot to the local people because of this uh, hundreds of people were saved and uh, regarding his uh, awareness and training program on mangroves uh, he has given a lot of training to the young scientists budding scientists like children and uh, students as well as scholars from uh, not only in india as well as 28 countries and uh, publication he has published more than 500 publications and more than 10 books 
and research projects has completed more than 30 34 research project completed now also he is having some of the research project to work on mangroves in india as well as uh, to the world and uh, to his credit he has uh, completed uh, 40 phd's so i am also one among the 40 and he has produced 22 fpl students and so he got lot of awards so i, I have given only a few like a Sci- tamil nadu scientist award in the year 1995 and internationally also uh, recognized and given naga award in the year 2001 and he is also uh, elected fellow of national institute of ecology in 2004 and a distinguished teacher award <coughs> given by the annamala university in the year 2009 and mangrove society of india uh, awarded so it's a uh, repute so given with the award in the year 2017 and as well as uh, electoral elected fellow of national academy of biological sciences in 2019 and he has visited more than uh, 23 countries i can say and uh, i have given some of the list singapore malaysia and vietnam kenya australia sri lanka thailand hong kong japan china senegal gambia and nigeria so finally i i could say one only one thing to about my professor dr k kadresan is a real scientist i can say uh, so he will he taught us how to uh, do research not only research but also how to live in the society uh, how to tackle the problems in the living world so like that here i have learned a lot from him not only me uh, all uh, all my uh, friends uh, those were my colleagues and wherever he goes he uh, is a bright star i can say is a superstar in mangroves uh, so with this uh, small introduction i invite my professor uh, to give our share his experience to our delegates thank you sir over to professor thank you is it uh, visible yes sir yes sir most brainy and beautiful intellectuals i am kadiresan i must be thankful to dr wilson pro vice chancellor for having given me this opportunity i must be very much thankful to my beloved students dr masila mani selvam maasu illada mani selvam uh, and dr ramesh head of the department so and all the authorities of uh, satyabama institute of science and technology today i am going to speak about mangroves and aquaculture mangroves are oceanic rain forest tidal forest coastal woodlands the only blue carbon forest on the earth its marvel of nature ecological wonder seen in splendor arching roots breathing roots mud dancing fishes salt to vomiting leaves breathtaking beauty i love mangroves i love mangroves i had my honeymoon trip also in the mangroves so 
so I love mangroves very much. Mangroves are the only tall tree forest between land and sea in tropical and subtropical coasts. So only tall tree forest between land and sea in tropical and subtropical coasts. So since they are located between land and sea, the water system supports the plankton and fishes. The muddy sediment supports the benthas, and the trees support oysters, snails, barnacles, crabs, and other invertebrates. So, in my view, the mangroves are a natural open aquaculture system. And the mangrove ecosystem has got three important components. One is vegetated area, mudflat area, where you don't find trees, and water creek area. The water creek area supports 40% of the fish resources of the mangrove ecosystem. The mudflat 20%, and vegetated area supports 40% of the fish resources. Mangroves support fish resources. 75% of the tropical fishes are born within the mangroves. 80% of the global food fish catch is dependent on mangroves. Mangroves serve as feeding, breeding, and nursery grounds for prawn, grass, mollusks, fish, birds, reptiles, and mammals. So mangroves are home for giving shelter. Mangroves are hotel for providing food. Mangroves are army for providing protection. Mangroves are hospital for providing, you know, the clinical medicine. The mangroves are highly productive. And uh, mangrove forests produce enormous amounts of litter about 8 tons per hectare per year. And the litter is cut by the crabs, decomposed by microorganisms, and thereby the decomposing organic matter detritus is produced as food for fishes. And this detritus is protein rich in nature. To feed the detritus, which is rich in protein, the zonal fishes aggregate in the mangrove water. In the natural marine environment sea, the nitrogen or protein content is very low, and therefore the protein rich, the detritus is available in mangroves, so the zonal fishes aggregate in the mangrove water. So, for example, the many of the marine species are completing their life cycle in the mangrove environment. The young ones and zonales of prawn, they are coming to the mangrove waters. They are feeding on the protein-rich detritus food. They are growing faster. After attaining the sub-adult stage, they go back to the deep sea where they are getting married without any dowry and they are releasing the young one and the young ones are again coming to mangrove waters. So this life cycle is dependent on the mangrove forest. The, the life cycle of the mud crab is very interesting. The mud crabs they, they are found to be present abundantly in the mangrove environment. And the mangrove environment is varying in temperature and low, I mean, salinity. And even though the salinity and temperatures are varying, these crabs are highly adapted to the varying conditions of temperature and salinity. But the young ones of the crabs cannot tolerate this fluctuating temperature. So therefore, the female 
uh, crabs are moving to the offshore region to the sea and the spawning takes place only in the offshore region and uh, the they are releasing the larvae and the larvae are developing in the offshore region after attaining the megalopa stage the megalopa are, are recruited in the mangrove environment and further growth is taking place the mud crabs are commercially very important and they are highly dependent on the mangrove forest so our people have developed a brush park technique for enhancing the fish catches in mangrove water not only our people sri lanka and west africa what they do is they cut the mangrove branches and keep it in the water allowing to decompose for some time see the fishes are attracted here and they they collect the fishes we found experimentally three fold increase in the fishes due to the mangrove branches which are decomposed so we experimentally proved whether the mangroves are attracting the shrimps towards the decomposing litter so we collected the litter in the bag litter bag and allowed them to decompose in the coastal water and every day almost we collected uh, the prawn which are attracted around the decomposing litter and also we collected litter for analysis of microorganisms and the level of uh, protein nitrogen so we found a very interesting trend like this after 30 days more number of zonal shrimps were attracted towards the decomposing mangrove leaves up to 60 days of decomposition similar trend is uh, seen with the decomposing uh, uh, litter where the total protein nitrogen content uh, was very high during that period and also nitrogen fixing bacteria are more during this period so now we say these zonal shrimps are attracted it is because of the protein content in the decomposing organic matter and it is because of the nitrogen fixing bacteria found to be present in the decomposing uh, mangrove litter is it really true then we proved it we isolated the nitrogen fixing bacteria and uh, not only that say for example acetobacter vinylandi this is a strain we isolated and then we used this strain as a feed for the bacteria uh, for the shrimp pinnaeus monodon uh, in the culture tank and we found enhanced growth and production of this strain we proved See, not only nitrogen fixing uh, uh, you know microorganisms mangroves are microbial paradigms the beneficial probiotic bacteria like lactobacilli yeast and others are abundantly present very interestingly there is a group of microorganism called thrastokytrids these thrastokytrids are the fungal proteins they produce the pufa polyunsaturated fatty acid especially dha and the concentration of 30 to 45% of the total fatty acid and this dha has got tremendous antibacterial and antioxidant property and we proved that the dha uh, incorporated with the feed is boosting the growth of aquaculture species sea bass latis calcariferous and uh, we said uh, actually the immune system is very important there are two types of immune system one is uh, non specific immune system another one is specific immune system in the case of uh, crustaceans shrimps and crabs so you don't have the specific immune system only immunomodulatory activity and the immunomodulator are the hemocyte counts in the hemolymph like blood cell count in the blood hemocyte count and hemolymph more is the hemocyte count 
better will be the immunity of the insulin crack. There are two types of hemocytes. One is uh, hyaline, that is colorless and small. The second type of hemocyte is granulated, large and dark. The third uh, immunomodulator is endobiotic. And these crustaceans have got these endobiotics in the hemolymph. The endobiotics are like antibiotics, proteins of low molecular weight, very high stability, with broad spectral antimicrobial activity. Hence, it is non specifically binding to the invading microorganisms and inactivating them. Lectins, the fourth immunomodulator, which is a sugar binding protein, inactivating the pathogen and also removing them through phagocytosis. So, this requires calcium as cofactor. Other immunomodulatory processes are conferred by uh, the factors like humocyanin pigment present in the hemolymph and also the total protein glucose present in the hemolymph, lactate, osmolality and the key electrolytes like sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium and magnesium. See, it is very interesting, the enzymes are playing vital role in the defense mechanism of crustaceans, shrimps and crabs. See, for example, the mangroves are producing enormous amount of phenolics. And these phenolics, they go and hit the granular hemocyte. When the phenolics hit the granular hemocyte, the granular hemocyte will release the phenol oxidase. This phenol oxidase will uh, act on the phenols and it is converted into quinone and melanin. And the quinone and melanin, they are highly antimicrobial. So therefore, the invading pathogens, uh, they are killed immediately by these uh, processes. Another interesting immunomodulator is carrageenan. This is the algal polysaccharide. It will go and hit the hyaline hemocyte. When the hyaline hemocytes are hit by this immunomodulator and this hyaline hemocyte is producing an enzyme called transglutaminase enzyme. This transglutaminase enzyme will clot the hemolymph. So hemolymph will become a gel. So the invading pathogens will be immobilized and inactivated by this gel-like spectre form. See, in the white stream, treated with carrageenan, 6 mu g per gram, you know, controlled the vitreosis by increasing the total hemocyte count and phenol oxidase activity. And nanoparticles. So we prove the silver nanoparticles synthesized by using mangrove extracts are very efficient in controlling the vibriosis in Pinaeus monada. It is very, very efficient in controlling vibriosis. You see, the hemocyte, this is in control, you see the hemocyte. In the vibrio attack uh, shrimps, the hemocytes are, you know, very much damaged. And if silver nanoparticles are uh, treated, there is no damage to the hemocyte. When the vibrio affected the shrimps are treated with silver nanoparticles, you know, the it is like controlled, the hemocytes are saved by silver nanoparticles. And regarding the specific immune response, a mangrove species called acanthus species is very efficient, we found. Also, the the Japanese the, they have also found out. The aqueous root extract is producing an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase, synthase enzyme. So this will produce nitric oxide. This will increase the macrophage function, you know, in the case of, uh, you know, the fissure in the immunomodulation. Well, there are three types of coastal ecosystems, okay? And these three 
coastal ecosystems are very beautiful. That is why I have shown the actress and don't mistake me. So coral reef ecosystem, seagrass ecosystem and mangrove ecosystems are the three types of coastal ecosystems. And the fish migrate among these three coastal ecosystems. Seagrass and mangroves, they serve as nursery. The adults are mostly found to be present in the coral reefs. So this fish migration is very important among the coastal ecosystems and the connectivity is very important. But uh, not much work has been carried out. So therefore, we studied whether the mangroves are supporting the seagrass bed and coral reefs. Um, we conducted an experiment in Gulf of Manna. So we selected a mangrove spot, mangrove seagrass interface, seagrass site and seagrass coral reef interface and coral reef alone. So in a seascape approach, we collected in a straight line, we collected the samples and analyzed. If you look at the primary productivity in water, the phytoplankton productivity highest in mangroves, it is intermediate in sea grasses and minimum in coral reefs. This is the phytoplankton primary productivity. Coming to the heterotrophic bacterial counts, also showing the same trend, maximum mangrove, minimum coral, and seagrass intermediate. If you look at the benthic faunal counts, neofauna and macrofauna, again, the mangroves are supporting more benthic organisms, minimum in coral, intermediate in sea grasses. So, the, uh, we used the fatty acids and stabilizer tops and proved that the mangroves are producing enormous amount of litter and the litters are decomposed by the microorganisms. And uh, the microorganism decomposition releasing the nutrients like uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and these nutrients are utilized by phytoplankton or microalgae and the microalgae or phytoplankton is the starting point of the food web in the marine environment. So therefore, the mangroves are very important in operating the marine food web. So if you look at this picture, when the area of mangrove increases, the number of shrimp species also increases. In the same way, mangrove area increases, the number of crab species increases. Therefore, species diversity increases with the area of mangroves. Not only that, the area of mangrove increases, the landing or the fish catch is also increasing steadily. As a result, you know, economic benefit is also increasing steadily when the mangrove area are increasing. Of all the mangrove estuaries, of all the ecosystems, mangrove estuaries have the highest fisheries value character. And uh, so mangroves support the coastal livelihood and food security. In one hectare mangrove area, we have 25 million commercial fish individuals are found to be present. Equally, the fishes, mangroves serve as habitat for wildlife and endangered species. So if you take royal bengal tigers, Sundarbans is the only mangrove tiger kingdom. It is found to be present only in our Sundarbans in India and Bangladesh. In Borneo mangroves, you can see only the proposis monkey. And in Philippines mangroves, you have sailfin lizard and uh, Bengalin, uh, you know, you can find to, you can find to be present in the mangroves of Philippines. So therefore, the mangroves are providing habitat for wildlife and endangered species. Ah, mangroves, most intense carbon sink in the world. And since it is uh, removing atmospheric carbon dioxide, 
to the global warming issue is reduced and climate change is mitigated by the presence of mangroves mangrove carbon sequestration potential is 10 times greater than the tropical forest so the mangroves are very efficient in carbon sequestration as compared to tropical forest so it is proved in uh, in abu dhabi uae you know abu dhabi city was very very hot 45 degree centigrade very hot city now they developed the mangrove park in the city right in the center of the city now the whole environment of abu dhabi city is cool it is proved and the mangroves proven to the ocean acidification and coral bleaching and every year mangroves export, export alkalinity of 4.2 trillion moles per year to coastal waters so therefore the ocean acidification problem can also be solved by the mangroves and my student has found the solar ultraviolet radiation on the top of the canopy is 12.5 kJ per meter square per day but under the canopy no ultraviolet uh, radiation zero ultraviolet radiation when we studied the shrimps and the head region especially the eye region of the shrimp they are absorbing the solar ultraviolet b radiation so it is highly deleterious to the shrimps so in the open system the impact of ultraviolet radiation will have the negative effect on the aquaculture species shrimp so body is not absorbing that much but only head region especially eye region is absorbing the ultraviolet radiation but mangroves are giving protection to the shrimps from the solar uv radiation the mangroves they are reducing the water pollutant especially toxic heavy metals the toxic heavy metals are converted into sulfides and they are buried deep into the soil not available to the environment and they are buried and uh, also they are maintaining mangroves are maintaining the water quality of the environment the bivalves mollusks and seaweeds associated with mangroves they clean up the water by absorbing nutrients reviving the oxygen level it is estimated a bivalve can filter 25 liter of water per day so they are very efficient coastal protection so if you have mangroves it will be like this if you don't have mangroves it will become like this so therefore the shore line erosion is caused in the absence of mangroves and mangroves give coastal protection against the extreme weather events tsunami flood surges and sea level rises so therefore the ecosystem services of mangroves are many the important ones are carbon sequestration and mitigating global warming breeding nursery and feeding ground for fish and coastal livelihood and food security and coastal protection against sea level rise flood surges shoreline erosion and solar uv radiation and mangrove support sea grass beds and coral reefs mangroves provide habitat for wildlife and endangered species and mangroves reduce pollution and maintain water quality therefore mangrove conservation is very 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 important very very important what about aquaculture that is my next section of my talk so when mangrove conservation and mangroves are important whether aquaculture is important yes aquaculture is important so the global demand for shrimp production the global demand for shrimp production is 50% of the total value of fishery products traded in the world so the shrimps are the living dollars and they earn lot of foreign exchange to any country so aquaculture is also important 
and aquaculture they will produce the cheapest protein uh, pro uh, protein food for the people so mangroves are important aquaculture is equally important but people say and i used to say the aquaculture is like wife and the mangrove should be husband and they should live together intimately but unfortunately today what is happening husband and wife they are quarreling with each other aquaculture is on one side and environmental is other side both of them are fighting with each other so it's all due to lack of science and understanding of these two important components aquaculture and mangroves so therefore uh, we need to understand we need to understand very shocking news 16th of this month 16th of, of this month indonesian marine uh, maritime affairs and fisheries minister is telling that the mangrove forest will not be converted into ponds for shrimp or fish farming he declared on 16th of this month and uh, 7th of this month it is told the civil war did not damage sri lankan mangrove forest but the shrimp farming damaged it this is the blame attributed to aquaculture 90% of the shrimp farms in the mangrove areas are simply abandoned because of the disease outbreaks so these are all uh, the now uh, people are going against the aquaculture so the issue of mangroves and aquaculture the issue is people say that aquaculture is the main driver of global mangrove loss for example southeast asia 34% of the world mangroves are present but 90% of the world aquaculture is being operated in southeast asia there 50% of the mangrove is lost and it is also said suppose if you convert to one hectare of mangrove for shrimp the carbon emission is equivalent to 5 hectare of the tropical evergreen forest converted for shrimp pond or 11.5 uh, hectare of tropical rice farm well this is the issue what is the solution mangrove friendly aquaculture is the solution and we have to focus more on this mangrove deforestation mangrove deforestation will lead to climate change the mangrove deforestation will result in the sea surface temperature increase it's because of you know the carbon uh, carbon sequestration when it is lowered the sea surface temperature is increasing and the sea level rise is also there then coastal flooding cyclones and then varying rainfall altering rainfall drought salinity all these things are happening all these factors climatic change factors they are affecting the coastal aquaculture farm coastal aquaculture farm for example water pollution will reduce the uh, oxygen level and less primary productivity the reduced light due to turbidity will lower the photosynthesis and high carbon dioxide and high salinity and high water temperature and low ph they all have the impact on the aquaculture productivity Uh, you know in the event of uh, climate change so my dear friends we need a sustainable aquaculture coastal aquaculture so for sustainable coastal aquaculture what we should do is we should increase the mangrove restoration and conservation so if the mangrove restoration conservation is increased the ecosystem services will be improved so at the same time socio economic benefits also increase and uh, in addition the resilience of the climate change the resilience to climate change will also be increased ultimately leading to sustainable coastal aquaculture so therefore mangrove restoration and conservation okay 
uh, will lead to the sustainable coastal aquaculture in future. So this uh, beautiful person is none other than myself only. Myself only, I am sitting on the boat. Just look at a small stick of mangrove who is having, you know, how much of, you know, oyster they are supporting. So the oyster culture, clam culture, mussel culture can very well be done in the mangrove area. And the crab patterning is most successful venture. So the crab patterning can be done in the mangrove area. Then pinfish culture and floating cake and artinia culture, polychaete culture, polychaete uh, per kg costing about uh, 2000 rupees and seaweed culture, all these cultures are compatible in the mangrove waters and mangrove water farming and uh, unfortunately we have not much attempted on these aspects. If we can integrate all these farming practices in the mangrove environment, in the mangrove environment, without disturbing the mangrove environment, we can achieve great many things. One Elangelian from Sirgali, he has developed a mitochondrial model of integrated aquaculture form system. This is an integrated model. In the integrated model, mangrove, you know, the sea bass, crabs, all these things are being cultured and it is highly beneficial. Within nine months, uh, our cost benefit ratio is, uh, you know, one is to four, which is very successfully demonstrated in our uh, Tamil Nadu, it is uh, uh, demonstrated. Then Indonesians, they have given a beautiful model. This silver fishery model, this has got two uh, gates, gate one, gate two. So the gate uh, one and two are the water lake. You can see the water lake. And you have the pond around. You have the pond for fish culture. And then the and then the mangroves in the center. Mangroves in the center. Separate pond for fish and a separate mangrove area. And we have the inlet. So water outlet and water inlet. And what happens, the benefits of water purification, nursery, food provision, and wave attenuation. Very successful, ideal silvo fishery model has been demonstrated from Indonesia. Finally, I want to say about artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence. Sorry. Artificial intelligence. The computer system, thanks to the computer department of Satya Bhama Institute of Science and Technology, they have taken a lot of effort. The future is going to be dependent on computer system. Today we are realizing that after COVID and microbiologists and COVID, you know, got, got a very good, uh, you know, relationship. So the artificial intelligence is the com use of computer system to perform the task of human intelligence. This can be very well applied in aquaculture. Say, for example, uh, you can have the weather forecast, harvesting time, ideal harvesting time, and stocking time, you know, uh, weather uh, forecast can be made using this artificial intelligence. And uh, the water sensor, by using water sensor, we can maintain the optimal conditions. Using agrobat, aqua bat, aqua bots, uh, robots, aqua robots, we can uh, do the treatments and the harvest without manually. We can use the robot and then we can go for harvesting. The ninety percent of the cost can be reduced by using the aqua bot. Of course, uh, this is one. Then sensor monitoring for health and food intake of the aqua species. And uh, this uh, food intake can be monitored using the sensor. Then you can collect all the farming data and store on the cloud to make the decision to enhance the yield of the aquaculture. Then crowdsourcing uh, to establish aqua business communities to share the information, the crowdsourcing is very important. So artificial intelligence can be used in aquaculture. 
Now the artificial intelligence is very important in the health care system of not only human being but also of water. In the Hakko culture, early detection, correct diagnosis and decision making, further treatment, all these things are possible using the artificial intelligence. So by using the pathology data set and the pathology digitized images based on the histological data related to genes, protein expression profile and all, you know, you can uh, uh, early detection, accurate diagnosis and decision making for the treatment can be made using artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, India has got more cell phones than tiles. We have more, uh, more cell phones than tiles. Therefore, everyone has got toilet. Even a newborn baby is holding a you know, mobile phone and operating it also. <laughs> Therefore, the artificial intelligence in aquaculture extensive service is very, very important. The real-time advisory for crop improvement, detection of disease action, and digital farming and farm services can, uh, can help the uh, Indian aqua farmers. Uh, what is the way forward? What is to be done in future? So we have to promote sustainable management of aqua There the silvo fishery. The silvo fishery is the integrated mangrove culture with brackish water aquaculture. Integrated tropic aquaculture that is growing different species from different tropic levels in an integrated uh, form. So this is integrated tropic aquaculture. Then organic farming, without using uh, chemicals and the minimum damage to environment and the ecosystem-based management, these three can be uh, possible for promoting the sustainable management of uh, aquaculture in future. Then lots of abandoned ponds are available and we need to do the rehabilitation and restoration. See, for recovering the abandoned pond, it takes 10 years only after 10 years, the abundant form can be restored and rehabilitated. So this is very, very important to step to be taken. And we have to improve the coastal livelihoods. And participation of the coastal people and communities are very important, for which the awareness raising to the coastal communities is also important. You know, when I say participatory management, I recall uh, my past experience uh, with uh, Dr. Masilla Mani Selvam. You know, before four days of tsunami, just before four days of tsunami, Dr. Masilla Mani Selvam, he mobilized the women, mobilized the women around my college. See, more than 100, 150 women and children they were all mobilized by Dr. Masala Mani Silva to the mangrove fields for making plantation. Now, just after four days tsunami came and many people died. And, you know, these people, the, the, uh, the women involved in the mangrove plantation, fortunately, they were not affected because they were living behind the mangrove forest developed by our students like Dr. Masala Mani Silva and others. You know, what happened? The people are all rushing to our department, you know, just simply, uh, you know, uh, prostrated in front of our feet and crying out. It is because of the mangroves, our lives were saved. I felt as if I got Nobel Prize for the students like Dr. Masala Mani for the great service they have done for the community, coastal community. So coastal community livelihood should be strengthened. Their life should be ensured, and aquaculture is very important, and mangrove environment is also important. My dear friends, I always consider mangrove environment is like my mother, and aquaculture is my wife. And whether wife is important or mother is important for a husband, both are important. Both are very important. For me, my mother also important, my wife is also important. Many people think, uh, many people are thinking that wife, W-I-F-E, is worries invited forever. No, it is wisdom invited forever. 
so therefore the mangrove environment is like a mother to the cat with love and aquaculture development is like a wife to be loved with care so thank you very much for the opportunity given to me let us have a vision to see bigger to act or to care mangroves and aquaculture together together for the benefit of the community society and the common man through science thank you very much thank you sir thank you for the wonderful lecture sir Uh, i hope the participants they have enjoyed it very much and there is a lot of comments saying it is a wonderful presentation and uh, there are a few questions sir i would like to ask the questions from the uh, on behalf of the participants sir with your permission before which i request uh, dr santanam sir from baradasan university to say a few words sir sir if very good evening sir i am myrest anand thank you thank you for your coming <laughs> sir i i was i was logged in for, in advance so advanced to hear you were an excellent and inspiring lecture as usual so we are all hearing your lecture so we are all uh, actually uh, inspired by your uh, hard work in my was my, uh, i am a msc student in our center of advanced study in marine biology so uh, by seeing you you are active active act mean active work and hard work sincerity in the research so i have got uh, uh, interest in uh, doing the research sir. so i am very happy to uh, share my uh, i mean uh, feeling with the uh, participants so our professor professor kadiresan sir is always uh, inspiring uh, a teacher so uh, by uh, hearing his lecture and uh, even by attending his classes Uh, when i was my, my, my msc student of marine biology i uh, i mean i i i i actually i got a thirst uh, in entering into research after seeing the professor kadiresan sir and his team research involvement and sincerity and hard work very thank you very much sir thanks for your uh, valuable you. uh, information and uh, i mean uh, an excellent uh, lecture uh, you, the way you explained as usual uh, by the wife and the uh, mother <laughs> uh, mother and wife both are important so you uh, you uh, excellently i mean uh, explained about the aquaculture and uh, mangrove so if there is no mangrove there is no shrimp as we know well okay so mangrove is like a mother and a shrimp is like a wife so uh, <laughs> the mother and wife both are important to form a good family so good family is human society so because of mangrove and shrimp we are uh, surviving sir Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent and inspiring lecture, sir. So I thank once again my friend, good friend, Dr. Maslamani, for uh, organizing such a wonderful uh, webinar on this topic, mangrove and aquaculture. So my hats off to my teacher, Professor Kadiri, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sandhu, sir. Thank you, sir. I also request Dr. Uh, Raja Ram from Baradasan University to share his feelings. Yeah, very good. On, good afternoon. Thank you. Sir, as usual, uh, we are very much inspired by your talk, sir. Uh, I, whenever we used to see watch your talk, you should give some uh, some quote like this. <laughs> End of the lecture, you should speak. You have some quote. This quote is very important. We like your lecture. Uh, it is very inspired, and I thank uh, Professor for a wonderful. wonderful lecture and also i thank uh, all the organizer for arranging such a wonderful event i thank every one of you thank you thank you sir uh, we also have dr tirunavakara sir sir with us thank you sir would you like to say something sir okay uh, maybe he'll be joining us sir sir uh, there are a few questions from the participants sir yeah, what is the prime difference between halophyte and halophytic associates are these halophytic associates true salt tolerant uh, species sir no actually halophytes you know they are obligate okay halophyte associates you know they are facultative that is so they can adapt to the halophytic condition as well as you know non halophytic condition okay sir so and hello. there is an hello yes sir uh, uh, we have sir? dr tirnavkar sir sir with us sir. Uh, ah yes yes uh, <laughs> Sir, Professor, good evening, Professor. Good evening, good evening. <laughs> uh, 
sir uh, we are we are very blessed to hear your voice again once again so uh, we are the generation uh, in uh, i mean in uh, between 97 to 2000 uh, period it's a, it was a golden period of cas we have enjoyed a lot like uh, many professors like you uh, we gained a knowledge and experiences how to do the research how carry out the research how succeed the research so research means uh, i mean uh, the synonym i mean i can say Uh, the ca is in maranbal is one of the pioneer institute uh, leading in our country uh, so that's why uh, the the many people we are uh, signing over uh, not only in india throughout the globe even in nasa also one of our uh, uh, alumni is there so uh, uh, being a, uh, a, a student we have enjoyed uh, uh, your teaching and your research experiences uh, so I, uh, whatever the techniques and uh, all the aspects you have followed the same thing mm-hmm. we want to impart to our Uh, future generation so many things we have uh, inspired by you sir thank you very much for the mm-hmm. opportunity sir. thank you thank you thank you sir so moving on to the questions again sir there is another question on uh, is there a different adaptation mechanism of mangrove associated microbes as compared to the members of the same genus found on normal land sir actually microorganisms you know they are highly adaptable to any environmental condition because of mutations and things like that and uh, therefore there is no question of uh, you know they are they are highly adaptable species there is absolutely no problem but in certain obligate forms obligate uh, forms the obligate forms you know they they they, they have strict osmotic balance so if you take uh, you know obligate microorganisms like thrasocyphes or halobacterium if you bring it to the terrestrial condition it will burst out so okay. therefore except the obligate forms other forms are highly adapted to any condition and uh, the uh, the marine organisms the archaea group you know they are the extremophilic organisms any extreme conditions you know they can grow okay sir uh, and there is another question sir uh, yes sir Sir, you have been muted, Nanak sir. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, and there is another question from another participant who asks that in mangroves we come across a lot of uh, sulfur content leading to sulfides. What are their effects on aquafauna and uh, soil reclamation? No, actually, you know the sulfur content. You know when they are uh, uh, the 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 microorganisms like reducing bacteria, oxidizing bacteria. they are living together in the mangrove environment we actually in the upper layer 20% of the upper sediment soil layer has got the aerobic forms see sulfur oxidizing bacteria go down to the mangrove soil you know you have anaerobic bacteria so the, the two uh, it's the largest domain of anaerobic bacteria so naturally you know the sulfates and other things you know they are being accumulated you know in the anaerobic uh, system the moment they are coming to the aerobic system they are oxidized but in the higher concentration what happens this h2s is converted into sulfuric acid or something like that uh, and again you know it is an open system you know the tidal flushing is there it is being diluted up or something like that that's why in many cases you know you know in some instances you can see the black black soil with stinking yeah rotten egg smell and all it is because of the h2s because of the disturbances caused due to the soil not the system is producing the toxic substance when the system is disturbed it is released and the sulfates are very important to bind with the heavy metals toxic heavy metals otherwise the toxic heavy metals will be available in the ground So the hydrogen sulfide will immediately bind with the toxic heavy metals buried in the ground. This is a unique feature of hydrogen sulfide. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful uh, lecture, sir. Uh, every time I hear you, we try to match up with the, your lecture, but then uh, we are just astonished, sir. You are keeping up to the trend. like you you are talking about ai artificial intelligence computers in uh, biology like whenever we uh, it this lecture is both informative for the students and also 
the staff members who are there many of uh, your students are they would like to talk to you actually so they have also appreciated whenever we look upon you when we try to come to your level you go to the next level raising the bar so it is always there sir uh, we'll try to catch up with you sometime sir <laughs> thank you sir thank you for the wonderful uh, lecture sir maslamani sir good evening sir sir as usual your lecture is uh, excellent sir uh, i can say when i was a student in msc i was amazed uh, to see you uh, always in smiling face very enthusiastic very active uh, but uh, definitely i could not be like this uh, that much enthusiasm you had and uh, i had uh, I, I, i can say i am blessed to have you as my guide phd guy i was there for 8 years i was enjoying my life you were helping a lot uh, to to do research as well as to my personal life and uh, because of this only i am here so not only that and uh, when i see your presentation today's presentation so it's really uh, everything is updated i didn't expect this type of uh, presentation from you so yes simply super sir so you are uh, related to aquaculture and even updated as uh, your uh, hod set artificial intelligence and you have given a lot of avenues to do research as well as to uh, do wonders in aquaculture as well as uh, uh, mangrove cultivation and uh, linking together like uh, sandaram sir uh, you said early um, and uh, so living as a family with uh, wife and mother it's a real <laughs> very very happy moment to Uh, have with you sir uh, we are really blessed to have your lecture in this uh, webinar series on marine uh, research and uh, aquaculture your lecture is uh, simply sync uh, exactly sync with the <laughs> title and thank you very much sir yes sir uh, yeah, i would like, like to add uh, i would yeah, i would like to add something dr ram uh, santanam dr rajya ram and dr dinokar sir and all other people and all the listeners you know uh, thank you very much i am really elated by your words sir. and felicitations thank you very much sir uh, please give me one minute minute ah, yes, <laughs> yes sir i would like to add on okay so kadreshan sir he has published over 500 articles yes. he has received lot of awards and mm. he has completed several projects mm. ebo hall he is a man who saved nearly 1000 human lives that is the need of the our our research should reach the society it should not end up with the laboratory okay but professor kareshan sir research is always uh, have a human touch societal importance so during time of tsunami actually we are we were there we, we are the witness so there are thousand human lives those who are inhabiting uh, bordering the mangrove which was planted by professor kareshan sir and his uh, team of scientists because of that mangroves there are thousand human lives were saved this is actually is a remarkable achievement made by my professor professor kadresan sir so we have hats up sir we are always uh, i mean uh, inspiring your uh, and uh, i am an enthusiastic lecture so we want to be a, a student of you always okay so with this uh, i would like to uh, compliment and appreciate dr maslamani selvam because he learned several thing from uh, kadresan sir so uh, and, uh, once again thank you sir i wish you all the best thank you very much sir all, all the credit goes to my students yes sir and yes, sir. Uh, you see the science without human faith is yes. disastrous yes our science is for humanity society and the people poor people it should be pro people pro women and pro poor that's yes. important thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you for the kind words uh, with this we move on to uh, the end of this session tomorrow please do join us for the third day of this webinar series where we'll be having dr sm rafi uh, who will be the speaker for tomorrow who will will be delivering a lecture on valuable and value added products from low value fishes wealth from waste please do join us tomorrow thank you sir thank you dr kadresan sir thank you Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Sandaram, sir.